might as well just, you know, in the final stages now, see how it all pans out. If there is a deal, uh, it's going to be a very, very thin trade deal. It will bear next to no relation to the Brexit that was promised either at the referendum or at the last election a year ago when he had his oven-ready deal on which he's now moving the goalposts. And I suspect if there is a deal, it will be on the same basis as the last time he did a deal, which is to climb down at the last minute and then get the ridiculous newspapers in our country to pretend that it's a great triumph. And I, you know, if I had to put my life on it, I suspect that's what will happen. Um, and I thought it was interesting hearing your report there because what is being offered here... Did you catch that? Uh, are you referring to my introduction? Is that what you're referring to? No, and, and also to your correspondent in Brussels right, and, okay. and, and, yeah. and, and, what, and her, her... Sorry, I didn't catch her name, but yeah. her assessment. Lucy Hoff. Yeah. Lucy, I didn't say, I, did, uh, I didn't catch her name, but I, I got her assessment. Yeah. And I think there is genuine bafflement amongst the uh, European Union leaders and the negotiators, because what is being offered, if you think about it, there is a very, very clear logic to it, essentially saying, look, you wanted to leave the customs union, you're doing that. You wanted to leave the uh, single market, you're doing that. We're saying you can have access to that which no other country will be able to claim, no other third country, which we now are, will be able to claim. However, if you diverge significantly from that, then we can review the, your access in relation to the sectors on which you're seeking to, to, to diverge. And that, sound, that strikes me as pretty reasonable. Um, and the bafflement that there is, I think there is a suspicion, I think some in Europe worry that Johnson's just a bit out of his depth and has never really moved on from being a journalist. And there are others who actually think that the, the goal the whole way has actually been the hardest possible Brexit, up to and including no deal. And so I think some of them think actually whatever happens, that's where Johnson... That's where it's headed. Pushed. But uh, uh, on, your, on your note on the, on the uh, issue of goods, uh, standards on goods, if the EU maintains the ability to define what those standards should be and to de unilaterally define what the tariffs or the fines are for violating those standards, and we don't have a seat at the table, which originally is an argument for remain, but mm. we no longer have that seat at the table because uh, uh, we're, we're not in the EU anymore. Um, how, do, how is that okay, though, in, in, in your view? Because, of course, we won't have any say over what those regulations will be and we'll have no say over what the fines would be for violating them. You'd be into, you, you'd have to get, be in the position that we're in now, which is, if you like, in the form of a bilateral negotiation. And that's the thing about, you know, Brexit's, Brexit's going to get done, vote Tory and get Brexit done. We're going to be living with the consequences of the, if you like, the, the loose ends of this for years and years to come. But on the, 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 the basis of us, I mean, the fundamental point is here, we are leaving. And what is making this far from being the easiest trade deal in human history, as the Conservative government said that it would be, is one of the most difficult because in most trade deals, you've got two sides who are trying to get closer together. In this one, uniquely, mm. you've got two Diversion. sides because of the decision that we're, we've made who are trying to diverge. Now, it strikes me as being perfectly reasonable for the British government to try to get the best deal that they can, but equally perfectly reasonable for the European Union, for whom the single market is, if you like, their crowning economic and political and diplomatic achievement, to say, we're not going to allow you to undermine that. And there is a lot of suspicion. I mean, I think you just have to be, you know, we just have to be open with people about this. There is a lot of suspicion about Johnson as an individual as to whether you can trust him, but also about the, you know, the right wing in the Conservative Party and the right wing more generally in our politics that has always wanted as low tax, low transparent, low regulation an economy as possible. Mm. And that there is a sense maybe that, you know, Johnson's just playing the European Union right. along. I, I've got to move on, but I want to ask you one last question. If I could have a very short yes or no, though I know it may be difficult, but just a concise answer. I try to get a squeeze in a call before the break. If, if you were still advising Mr. Blair and he was still Prime Minister, would Prime Minister Blair agree to a deal that would bind us to EU rules and regulations and fines with no say over what those rules and regulations are and how much those fines would be? No, but he wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. <laughs> right.